let's go back under the master and I'll group over here. I'll press the folder of the group button there, double click. We'll call this group. Uh, actually, it's under shapes, so group. Um, this one's going to be a cube. Let me open this up. It's not under master, so this is group sphere, so group cube. I'll left click with the mouse and drag it under here where you see the, the line change for the icon. So it's group cube now. In here, I'll create a new layer by clicking this button. And I'll call this cube01, underscore 01. Which looks similar to the sphere, underscore 01. So now I'm on this layer. So as an example, if I were to paint on this layer over the cube, uh, over the sphere, it, it's on its own layer, so it doesn't affect it. I'll just undo so there's nothing in there. I press Control A to select everything. You see everything selected over there, and then I press Delete, and then Control Shift A to make sure that's deleted. Okay, with that, what you could do uh, is this is kind of like a guideline for me to know where the bottom is. You could left click where the ruler is and just drag down. And when you're done, you can select the move tool and then move it back up. This is just for a guide for me to know where I'm going to place it around. So I'll make a cube here. What I'm going to do is click here. I'll choose a rectangle. I'm going to do kind of like a silhouette. So I'll try to keep it around. I'll do another guide around this height. It's just for practice, so it doesn't have to be super precise. I was going to say do a cube like this, but I actually want it to be skewed. So I'm not going to choose that selection. I'll press Control Shift A to deselect or select deselect. There's select none over here. Same thing. Instead, I'm going to use the lasso tool. It'll be freeform and how this works. If you left click and hold the mouse button, it'll draw like a selection. Uh, press Control Shift A to deselect. But if you just tap left click and this click, you'll get these straight lines. So I'm going to kind of like make a shape that looks like a cube. Like this. Get that. If I hold Control while I do this, you'll get angles. Let's snap to angles so it can make it perfectly perfect height. I'll make it around the same height here. I'm just eyeballing it. And then I'm going to make it around like here. Holding. Oh, I'll choose here. And then click to close. The yellow line means it's going to be closed. So now you have this selection. And what I'm going to do here, I'm going to fill this with uh, the gray color. That's how I started. So I'll click back here, go to paintbrush. I'll click the color here. Make sure these are zero. Oh, yeah, back to HSV, zero, zero, zero. So that's black. I move the value, the V for HSV, hue saturation value. I'll put it for 50% to start off. And I could do OK. And then I, because the paintbrush, I'll make everything hard so there's no fall off at the end and then paint everything. So I have that. One other thing I want to do is if I go into the lasso tool, you have these options here to uh, right now, for example, this mode is replace the current selection. So if I do another lasso like this, it replace the selection over there. If I press Control Z, it will undo it. If I select this option, this one will add to the current selection. So what's already currently selected, if I click here, for example, and press Enter, what was already currently selected, and plus any intersection, if I click here, for example, close that, all these will be selected. So I'll just press Control Z, Control Z. The other one is subtractive, only basically subtract from the current selection. So if I don't want something here, and I 
or press enter, it will get rid of that part of the selection. I'll press control Z to go back. And here, this one is whatever is intersecting. So what I could do is as long as, okay, I want, I'm going to use this for a second to intersect this line to here. I'm eyeballing it to make it look like, you know, something like that. And then go from here. And then I'm just uh, closing it to intersect. So whatever is intersecting is left. And I press enter. So now with that, what I could do is actually color it at different, different colors here. So I could say, if, uh, if we're still dealing with the light is coming from the top. Uh, actually this, I'll undo this. Uh, I actually want to still be in intersection mode. I'm just, I want that a little higher. So I'll go from like this. And one thing is the yellow line is to close it, but it doesn't, uh, until you press enter, you can still maneuver it by going, clicking over the, one of the, icon, one of the circles. So if it turns yellow, you can move it and correct it. I find this is a little more active, interactive than the Photoshop version of this. So you can adjust it afterwards. I'll just say that's okay for now. Press enter. Actually, I'll zoom in here. I'll press plus on the number pad over here to zoom in on the canvas. Hold, just press and hold the space bar. You don't have to click anything. You just move your mouse without, I see that I didn't get the corner here. So I'm going to press control Z to go back to this selection. You can see the alpha here. I'll reselect in intersect mode to make sure I go through the corner. Uh, I'll adjust it. I'll go through the quarter here, here, and I'll close. I did not close. Now I'm closing. Okay. So I could just adjust that here. Just that, go through that quarter, and this one makes sure it goes through that quarter here. And okay, this probably looks more like a. Uh, a little higher. Okay, this probably looks like a cube. Let's just go with this. And I press enter. All right, so this will be um, my color on the top. And what I'm going to do is just color each one separately. So what I could do is actually make another layer. Uh, say cube. Cube one top. Now, even though it's the same color, I want that to be, start the top color to be um, default gray or mid gray. So I click the color here, it's still 50% while zero, zero over here is okay. And I'll paint it again, even though it looks like nothing's happening because uh, I'm on the top here. If I hide the layer under it, I painted that. If I undo, see, I hide, uh, I hid the bottom layer. And I'm at the top layer. I'll just paint that section. Okay. So I have that. And then down here, what I could do is right click and then choose alpha to selection. And I'll have that selection again. And what I could do over here is now. I could paint a little under like a different color. Like I said before, this is the light in this case. Actually, let's move. Over here, the light in this case, I'm going to sample this color here. So I'll press control while I'm in paintbrush mode, control click. And because I'm under, if I paint, it's going to paint that part because the layer on top is covering it. And what I could do, um, I'll click here and make another layer. And I'll call it side. It's okay. And with the side, 
I'm going to this one. I'm going to try to do a build up color. So this one was um, I call this cube. I don't know why the name went away. Zero one silhouette because that's the base color of it. That's just the silhouette. This one's a this one will be uh, sorry. This is the top, and now for the side, while the silhouette is still selected as outlined. I'll go to this over here and I'll click. I'm just going to eyeball it here. And I'm going to do the other side in intersect mode. I'm in intersect mode, so only what's intersected will get selected here. And all right, so I'm on the side here and I'll press enter. Only the intersection will stay. And I'll make this one a little darker so if i hold press control and click here i'm well okay so it doesn't i have to be in paintbrush mode click right click left um, hold control and left click over there so to get that color and from that color if i click over here that's around mid gray again i'll go a little darker and press ok and now i'll paint in here now, if I press Control Shift A, I have kind of like my starting point for my cube, and I'll make a new layer. So, unlike this one where I was painting on top of each, on top of it, what I can do in this one is basically uh, start that off and and then color from here. So here. I can keep it separate or actually, you know what, I'll probably combine it. And what I mean by combine, I'm going to merge these three layers into, into one. Before merging the selection, the reason why I want to merge it is just so I'll just paint everything, everything over one. But I like to keep the, the separation of of each one where I have the the side by itself, the top by itself, but this is the silhouette has everything right now. So what I want to do, uh, what I'm going to do is create a new section so I could uh, remove it. So this could happen often using layers. Um, I'll just show you what I mean. So what I'm going to do is duplicate the, the layer if I right click on that layer and say duplicate layer. That's gonna be a copy. And I'll duplicate the top one too. I'll move that up and I'll hide these two, the original ones. So now I have another copy of the side, a copy of the top. And what I'm gonna do is, well, this is, if you look at this, this is the selection editor, right? So that's what, what's white is selected, what's black is not selected, and anything in between is kind of like transparency. So if I click, let's say over here, go to selection editor from select menu, it'll take me here. Uh, you could again, go to select none or control shift control A, or you could press this button in the selection editor to deselect everything. Now what you could do is these two are, are, um, Remember, if I right click the side and say uh, select the alpha, it will select that side. And if I go for the top, right click and say select alpha, you'll see the top. So if I go back to the top one, I'll deselect everything by pressing that button or shift control A. If I go to the top one and right click, there's an option called, well, not merge visible, merge down. What will do that do is the la that layer will merge with the one below it. So you say merge down. And you'll see now these are combined as one. So if I right click and choose merge, actually uh, select alpha, you have that option over there. So why do you care? Why do I care for this? This is my temp selection because I'm going to create, use this. If I hide it, I don't need to see it, I press Control Shift A to deselect it. 
but I could right click here and then choose alpha to selection and I can still make the selection even though it's not visible. I'll press Control Shift A again or press that button. Why do I care about that? Because with this silhouette, I'll take the silhouette, I'll keep that silhouette, but I'll duplicate this. Duplicate layer. And with the silhouette, I'll, I'll hide the original. So this is the copy one. The silhouette, if I right click and choose select alpha, it will select it. Right? Uh, because again, everything else is it's on its own layer, including the sphere. It will select that, so I'll just bring those back. With that selected, uh, well, actually, actually, I don't need that selected right now. What I need is the temp selection under it. So I'll wait. I'll deselect here by pressing the button. Temp selection, right click, alpha. And then now I have this. So if I go back on this layer, I can press delete and I'll get rid of everything else. And then I could deselect by clicking there. And sometimes it doesn't clean it up correctly. That is an issue. So in a case like this, I'll just uh, use the well hardness brush for the eraser, the eraser tool here, shift E. And I'll bring the size down and I'll manually delete it. This happens sometimes when it's not accurate with uh, the erasing. And I can press the plus sign on the num numeric key to make sure it, we get that. So now with this, if I, now this silhouette, so basically I right click and choose alpha to selection. I have a selection for the front face. This is also um, the resolution. It's not a lot, if you have a higher density, mistakes like this, a trick is that you would, you would um, paint like this or do shading at a really, big a resolution and then when you're done you you half the resolution so you'll hide mistakes like that or like a pixel off or right now and hoping the dithering will get rid of it uh, dithering is pretty much like how you take something from higher high resolution and bring it to a lower one and the uh, the method to keep that okay so now that i've is able to separate the front face i press this one to get rid of the, the selection or you can, again you can go to select done or can shift control a to deselect or select nothing so this temp layer that was really meant just to so i can make that selection to subtract it manually so i'll alpha is the selection so that was just to do that so i could do my own boolean or basically uh combinations so if i click here i can set this back basically the mode of like how to add or, or your tier selection. I'll set the, the brush, um, not the brush, the rectangle select back to this default. Same thing with the free default, just so if you're new to this you and you forget it is not working correctly, at least it's back to the normal section, the normal way of working. So the temp selection, I don't need it. I'll click here to deselect. I could either drag a uh, click click and hold a layer and drag on top of the x so will delete it or if i press ctrl z to go back click here and press x it will also delete the layer i don't need that temp copy so now i'll call this one front and i'll call the silhouette when uh select silhouette just because i won't be using this for, for visibility i just would use it if i want to select I right click alpha to selection and we'll want to correct the whole silhouette select the whole silhouette so with that uh done i'll click here to deselect i have the front for the cube i have the side and i have the top so i have the initial shading because the lighting unlike the the sphere when we started off we'll just start off uh if the light is coming from here, a lot of the face facing the light will be bright. That's why I color that one lighter. And then it get a little darker because it's not as facing the way. And this is occluded or not seen by the light, so that's dark. If the light is coming from that light source, if we're copying the same type of thing as we're doing the sphere here. So with that, um, what I'm going to do now is actually I'm going to hide these because if I want to make copies, 
I could refer back to these. So I'll take a uh, click the create new layer here. And I'll move these things into the new layer. And I'll call this template uh, group cube template. And I'll hide that. It's under the cube group. So basically, if I want to make more cubes, I'll start off with this, copy it, and then and then modify it. Now with that, what I'm going to do is if I can select this, right click, I could do a duplicate. So what this did was duplicate the whole group, everything in there. And what I could do is right click and then say merge layer group and everything will be as if it's one, except that they were invisible. That's not how I want to do that. So if I control Z to undo, keep on controlling Z. Okay, make sure they're, everything's on first for that layer. And the one that I copied from is off because that's the original one I'm keeping. Uh, uh, sorry, this is the original template stuff. Uh, that's the silhouette select. I'll put that under. So that's the top, the bottom, the side, I mean, and the front. So combine, it looks like that. Okay. So this is a template. I'll just hide this. For this one, uh, again, the motor just on the bottom. Actually, do you even need this one anymore? Yeah, I don't need it because I'm going to take this group. Now they're all visible. The, the copy, right click, merge layer group. And now this is as one. And I could right click. Well, I could hide the other stuff to see that you see that's just one thing. I could right click, you select alpha. So it selects that selection, um, just a silhouette. So now if I draw in it, you could also middle mouse button click if you're using a mouse to move across, or if you could, again, hold with this space bar. Now I'm going to do the same thing. So this is the, the base values for the each face. Now, uh, actually, I'll, I'll zoom out a bit because this is lower resolution. You'll see the pixelation. I already selected the outline, so I can't paint past it. I'll click here and choose airbrush. And I'm going to choose a bright color, a brighter color, so hold control and click here and I'll make the brush bigger by pressing the close square bracket which are close to the P key on your keyboard and now with that I should be able undo undo airbrush oh the hardness is high so let me lower the hardness so it actually like just bleeds over so I'm using the highlight now and what I want is that like a little bit of the light is highlighting up here. Actually, I, I did that I'll undo because I didn't want that to bleed as much. So I want as if light was shining up like this and using it to kind of to like come off. Uh, yeah. So I have that. And you could have that uh, undo, like, you could have it like kind of blend coming in here. Um, for the shadows, I'm going to click here, or hold control so it's dark. I'll click here and take the value, go a little lower. Um, I would figure, like, if the light's blocking here, here would probably be a little darker. It might be hard to see. Oh, hard to see it here, so it might not make that much of a difference. So we have the bounce light or the light that's bouncing off the surrounding to give secondary lighting from the primary. And the ground is white, so it's going to be a little bit of bouncing light color bleed of the white ground onto the object. So you could sample the white, I guess. And then just uh, paintbrush a little in from that side. So the dark side is getting lit up a bit by, um, oops, take that off. Make that bigger by using the square and do, and you could paint this a bit. Now that's a little strong. What you could do if you have 
you might want to lower the opacity if you're using a mouse and then try to paint over and it's not it won't be as strong when you're air this is for the airbrush so if i put it really low and i paint it builds up a lot slower even with a, a, a mouse if you have a you could also kind of match the opacity if you, ha if you have a Wacom uh, with it. Oh, that's the normal mode for that. And uh, yeah, but the force dynamics, it's basic simple. We can talk about that later, but um, I'll just use the mouse version or basically taking the opacity low and then painting slightly to make it look like it's bleeding, like getting color from the side. And I, I think that's bleeding a little too much, so I'll hold control click to get sample that color and and paint this back. I'll lower this so it doesn't. But if I'm worried if it's going over, because I made the cube template, I could take the top, right click, they're invisible, but I could say selection to alpha, and the selection will just be for the top. So now if I Whoops, um, undo. Make sure you paint on the correct layer though. This is the layer I'm painting on. So I should call this uh, cube, call it zero 01, just so that's the one I'm painting on. And these were templates, so I'll just keep that hidden. And I was sampling this color, but I think the opacity is too low, so I'll bring it a little higher and then paint some more. Uh, I also noticed that I lost my selection, so let me go back here, right click, top, alpha is the selection, and just make sure I'm in cube. And there I could paint. You could bring up the opacity if it's too high, you'll see that it gets painted a lot quicker. I did control Z, so I'll just lower the opacity and just try to smooth that out. And you can go back and forth with this. Uh, I'll choose the silhouette, right click and choose the alpha for the silhouette so it takes the silhouette one. Actually, I'll do the side. Right click alpha. So it's just doing the side. I'll click back on my cube that I'm painting. Hold control, click here. And I'll just uh, adjust how dark I think that should look for the color. And then I could press control shift A or select none to deselect. Um, again, you can go back and, and change this, but I'll leave it for now. And for this, I'll create a new layer and I'll call this shadow. And I'll put the shadow under. And again, I could click here to reset to black. And what you could do, because the shadow layer is under the layer that I colored, so it's just Q, and I put it to black. And I have the airbrush. Uh, you can put the opacity what you want, and I'll make this size a little bigger. Oh, that's too big. <laughs> uh, that might be good. And you could paint what you want. Um, I'll put hard just a little high, not not perfectly hard, because I still want kind of like a fall off there. Maybe a little less, and then I'll go. Actually, I'll do here. I'm trying to get the, the shadow start more here, get darker there. Except that it's, uh, I have to use a spray, basically use the spray and then move it at a speed that seems like it makes sense. Yeah, the hardness, I'll have a bigger fall off for that. Uh, I don't like that. Yeah, I don't like how this is going to not uh, flowing like even like if this is supposed to fall off a bit. For now, I'll, I'll keep 
I'll keep it like that. Now the thing is this is bleeding. Since this is sharp, I want to actually cut that out. So one thing you could do is that, A, I could actually erase it. Oh, actually, you know what? Yeah, I could, I could erase it by clicking here, taking the free select tool. So remember, you could just click, left click, not hold, click. And I'll click the corner here. And I want this because it's a sharp cube, so sh uh, hard surface edge. The shadow should be like hard surface as well. So I could go from like here. Uh, and then basically what I'm doing in this mode, um, this selection mode, which is the replace the selector mode. So the selection you make will replace whatever was selected before. It's hit, it's selected and I press delete. Whoops. And um, I press control D. That's Photoshop <laughs> method. But it kind of made that uh, zoom in. So if I click here, I want to, what I wanted to do is unselect. So I click this. I made that sharp edge there and if i want i could kind of like go back to the airbrush put like a low hardness and um kind of uh oh where's the painting but i want to yeah press on direct for that or uh sorry so i did control z um i'm done with this so i say select none i want to make sure i'm on my shadow layer and you could uh, kind of like uh, fix the shadow, that sharp edge over there a bit, if you want. So I want this to kind of fall off a little more. So is it maybe here is sharp, but uh, I'm using the square bracket next to the P. And I just want to add some fall off, fall off with that. A little more or in this case to get a blend i'll just take the eraser tool make this bigger and kind of like just erase the edges so it's uh so it's a little softer so it kind of blends but that's kind of like the idea i'll click well whole control well just um Holding control to zoom out. So you could uh, let me make this bigger. So it just seems like it blends a little better. I want it sharp because it's sharp there, but I want it to blend afterwards once it's like out. Or you could keep it. In a case like this, you want to look at a real life reference to see what it looks like to get that effect. So, there's a cube. That's how you shade a sphere, and that's how you shade a cube. Thank you for watching. Remember to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the notification bell.